Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology, where we are anxiously awaiting puck drop on a brand new season of Tiger Hockey. Good afternoon and welcome to RIT Hockey Media Day as the men's and women's programs continue preparations for what they hope will not only be a successful season, but a uh, season full and uninterrupted one as well. We'll talk live with both programs, head coaches and team captains in just a bit, but for the first time in over four decades, RIT has a new athletic director. In July, Jackie Nicholson took over the reign, succeeding the nation's longest tenured AD, Lou Spiotti, who retired after 47 years at the Institute, 41 of which were spent as the director of athletics. We thank Lou for his service, and we welcome in Jackie Nicholson, who is the fifth athletic director in RIT program history. First off, welcome to RIT. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Looking forward to a great year of RIT athletics. What attracted you to this position coming from as the associate athletics director at Albany State the last four years, a Division II school in Georgia. What attracted you to RIT and, and, and this position? Well, I think as a former student athlete, I competed at Virginia Tech where I ran in track and field. Uh, just the opportunity to impact students and really be at an institution that values the academic experience of student athletes. Um, so when you're at the large level, sometimes it's athlete student, but here at RIT, it's really focused on that academic experience of the student athlete. So really having a chance to be at a high achieving academic institution, knowing where student athletes still graduate at a high rate. Uh, so having an opportunity to be here and, and make change and a strategic change for those student athletes is what really attracted me to this position. Knowing what everyone's been through in the last 18 months, especially the student athletes here at RIT, how gratifying is it for you to see them out there this fall competing and, and being successful? I think the gratitude just started when they just came back to campus. Yeah. So we were lucky just to get them back here and seeing them here in August was just was just fun and exciting. And just to see that they're excited just to be on the field of competition and those who are practicing are just excited to be able to practice at a full level again. Um, so I'm just really thankful for that opportunity to have them out here and to see them compete again after almost two years of kind of sitting around and just practicing a little. Yeah, absolutely. We're all excited to see that again. What, what's something you wanted to come in and establish from day one here in your position at RIT? I think just really establishing that student athlete experience. So what does that holistic experience look like from our student athletes? From what does their co coaching infrastructure look like? What services are we providing within athletics? So just really want to come here and establish that student athlete experience and make sure that they're prepared for life after athletics. As we all know, um, as a student athlete, it, it stops eventually. So making sure they're prepared for the real world. So putting things in place in student athlete development services to ensure that they're ready for life after athletics. So really looking forward to doing that and establishing that and then really developing our coaching staff and the infrastructure we have. We have a lot of great coaches here um, and a lot of great assistant coaches and making sure we can retain that staff that we have here and really developing them and making sure they're ready to take our programs to the next level as well. Absolutely. Well, I know Albany State didn't have hockey. No, we Correct did not. if I'm wrong. <laughs> what will it be like? Will this be your first in-person event when you attend a hockey game this season? Well, I might mention one of our rivals, but uh, one of my great mentors <laughs> is the AD at Michigan Tech. Okay. And so I had an opportunity to attend some Michigan Tech hockey games. But this will be my first RIT hockey season. Um, have to really adjust to the cold weather just in the <laughs> GPC. Uh, so have to really adjust to that. But looking forward to see um, both of these programs compete and compete at a high level this year. Fans that have been in this building know it feels like February already oh, in yeah. here. It's 80 outside, but it's cold and it, it's season ready in the GPC all Already. What are you looking forward most about the hockey programs and, and what have you seen already? I think from those what I'm programs? looking forward most to is getting to know those student athletes. Uh, so I had an opportunity to have lunch one-on-one um, -on -one with uh, women's hockey this week and looking forward to do the same thing with Coach Wilson and getting to know those student athletes, what yeah. makes them tick. And so then when they're on the court, I know how to support them. On the ice, I know how to support them. Um, so really looking forward to that and just seeing them compete again um, and compete with fans in the stand. Yeah. So competing with no one around is definitely different than competing with fans in the stand again. So really looking forward to just seeing everyone back in the GPC truly supporting our student athletes at a high level as well. What can fans expect uh, as far as coming back out and being a part of uh, this atmosphere again? Of course, uh, the number one thing, of course, with COVID is mask. Yeah. So everyone can expect to wear mask. Um, expect to kick off the season this weekend with women's hockey on Sunday. Um, so they are ready to compete. And Coach Brown, I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but they're ready to compete. But we will be in here with mask on um, for right now based on university standards and you know the state guidelines. Um, so mask 
but we, we want some excitement. Um, getting our students back involved and engaged, we want some excitement, we want fans, and we want some energy back in GPC after kind of being dead for the last 18 months. Yeah, that will be nice. It is a, uh, a scene you don't want to miss. I know you're looking forward to yes. it, and, uh, and we certainly appreciate your time. Obviously, fans can go to ritathletics.com and get more information on spectator policies as we get closer to games being played here in the GPC. So much excitement on the horizon for RIT Athletics, this facility, so many things going on. We appreciate your time joining us here today. So much more to talk about yes. in the weeks and months ahead, uh, but we appreciate you joining us here today on Hockey Media Day. Thank you. Looking forward to a great season and, and seeing what you guys do as well. Thank you for everything you do for RIT Athletics. We appreciate you, and we look forward to more conversations with the new athletic director, Jackie Nicholson. When we come back, we'll be joined by the Bruce B. Bates women's hockey coach, Celeste Brown, as her team is set to begin a new season in just three short days. You're watching RIT Hockey Media Day. This is RIT Sports Zone Live. We all have something, a passion to pursue, a theory to prove, a difference to make. We harness creativity to discover meaningful solutions fueled by innovation, changing ourselves and the world around us. We reside at the intersection of the exceptional and the unconventional. We are a community of curious minds that achieve, make, improve, perfect. At RIT, we're always on to something amazing. Welcome back to RIT Hockey Media Day live from the Gene Policini Center where the women's hockey home opener is now just nine days away against Colgate. Hey, last season was the first year for the new Bruce B. Bates women's hockey coach Celeste Brown. The 2015 RIT alum returned to her alma mater following three seasons as an assistant at Penn State. It was a difficult year for Brown and the Tigers juggling several COVID-related stoppages along the way. In fact, the Tigers didn't play one game last season with a full staff or roster and as a result, they struggle to a 1-15 and 15 season. Obviously, Coach Brown, an alum, wants to get that turned around. Joined now by Celeste, and uh, I guess we start off with what kind of toll did last season and everything you had to go through take on this team and, and yourself? Sure. Um, thanks for having me, Kevin. Sure, always. Um, but first and foremost, I think the whole country, the whole world had yeah. a toll on them. So um, specifically for us, it was, I think, just a great opportunity. And that's the lens that we're looking at it through. Meaning it told us a lot about the program. It told yeah. us a ton about our team, about um, each individual on our team. And while we went through ups and downs, and like you said, we didn't have you know, one game with full players, full staff. Um, it was just uh, a measuring stick of where we need to go. And now we're able to establish a plan to get there. Last uh, year when we talked uh, and you were just getting started, you mentioned you were just starting to put the puzzle together. How are the pieces coming together in this rebuild in year two? Sure. Um, well, first off, we, we brought in a large freshman class, right? And those are puzzle pieces, bringing in players, and because ultimately it's about the players, the personnel in here. Um, we've also assembled some new puzzles in our staff. So we have a new assistant coach, uh, hockey operations that will have massive impact in our progress moving forward. Um, but again, just those benchmarks of where we were last year against, say, a Penn State, who's a top 10 team in yeah. our league, and um, even Mercy or Syracuse, tough competitors, to understand where we are against them and the style of play that we need to, to have to get yeah. competitive, um, those are really those puzzle pieces that now we're drawing in. So I'd say we have... You know, we have our edge assembled, but now we're working on the inside um, pictures. And it is a process. And you mentioned Penn State, the former assistant there, uh, ranked number 10 going into the season. So they have a good program coming back, uh, as always. You have 13 newcomers, including one transfer from Providence. What are the challenges of getting it all to gel together? Yeah, when you have a, well, 
right now we have 13 newcomers. That's more than half of our team yeah. is new. Um, but the challenges really are are on all of us to just come together and trust one another. And that's what, that's what we spend a lot of time on. I, all hats off to our, our returners. They spent a lot of time this summer getting together, doing small events just to build that trust. And ultimately, when you have a team that you know can rely on the person next to them, that's when you have success. So if we're working on that. The X's and O's of hockey will come in, and there's going to be a learning curve. Yeah, um, sure. And that's to be expected. And I think all our players understand that. But it's a matter of us focusing on our controllables and going out there. And if we can execute those, then we're going to continue to build – you know, sort of lay brick by brick throughout the season. You talk about execution, difficulty scoring last year. Again, it was a difficult year for everyone. You managed just nine goals in 16 games. How do you produce more offense this year? Yeah, I I think that's a big focus for us. I, I think it stems, too, from just the defense, defensive zone and yep. our ability to break out the puck. Um, but also, I think, just having a consistent practice schedule or just a 8 a.m. Right. Yeah. 8 a.m. A consistent uh, conditioning schedule so that we can go out and be prepared and not be tired because we just took five days off. Yeah. Um, not that that's an excuse, but all of that factors into our ability to score goals. Right. And you build confidence in practice. I say, you know, practice builds prep preparation or preparation builds um, confidence. And so when we're prepping day to day, we can go out and say, hey, we know we practice this in practice. Let's go score some goals because we know how to do it now. And, and just to clarify, the coach didn't set that 8 a.m. practice schedule. The players voted That's on right. that. They wanted it. Well, one of your players, your captain this season, Jordan Marchese, back for a fifth year taking advantage of the NCAA's extra year of eligibility that they're offering to athletes due to COVID. How important is it to have her back and what does she bring to you on and off the ice? To have Jordan back is 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 a huge um I mean, I, I don't really have words. She's yeah. an unbelievable leader, unbelievable human being. She's a heart and soul player. So if you think of a Tiger hockey player, that's Jordan. And, um, you know, we really, we, we contribute her, you know, our success building our program to partly to her. Because it is a player. It's a partnership between staff and players. And that's how you build. And her, you know, her day-to-day, -day, how she preps, her day-to-day, -day, how she treats her teammates, how she pulls them along is so impactful. And a lot of people don't see that from the outside looking in. Um, but to have her back, she can show the, the young kids, this is how we do it, yeah. and this is why we do it. And so we're really excited to see where she can go this season and the impact she can have. Yeah, important to have her back. We're talking about her, Jordan Marchese, and we're joined uh, live now by Jordan, the Tigers captain, joining us from the green room downstairs, uh, only on the ice for three games last year. How difficult was last season for you, both physically and mentally? Yeah, yesterday, or last year, sorry, that was a tough year with COVID and everything going on. It was definitely tough, um, not even having my family come visit. That was a big thing, but uh, we stayed together as a close group and got through it together. Why did you decide to come back for a fifth year? Honestly, RIT hockey and the school mean uh, means everything to me. So getting another year, another opportunity, I took it as fast as I could, and I'm here today, and I couldn't be more proud or happy. What's it like playing for Coach Brown? You know, you got a little taste of it last year, now hopefully a, a full year to experience it. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, it's um, probably one of the best uh, coaching I've ever gotten in my career as a hockey player. Um, and I think a lot of my teammates can say the same thing. Just the amount of care um, that she has for each and every one of us. And the same goes for the other uh, members of our coaching staff. So last year, yes, it was a, it was a short year in terms of actual hockey and, and uh, because of COVID. So I definitely wanted another year with Coach Celeste. So I'm back. What are your expectations for this season? Obviously, there's so many factors and, and things have to go right, uh, you know, off the ice uh, for, for teams to be successful. What do you hope to see in, in your final year here? Yeah, I, I hope to see just a, a change in terms of um, our winning. Um, you mentioned before that we have a big freshman class coming in, and honestly, it's, it's not even looked at as a challenge. I think that each one of them are so great, and I'm so happy that they're here. Um, to take this team to the next level. Um, so this year I just want to start off with a, a strong foundation, a full year without COVID, and hopefully continue on for years to come, and I'll be the proudest alumni around.
All right. Well, thank you so much, Jordan. And, and best of luck at Mercyhurst on Sunday and the rest of the way as well uh, in your fifth year. Thanks so much, Kevin. All right, Jordan Marchese joining us. Uh, great to have a person like that, like you said, a, a great character on and off the ice and important in that locker room. But you also have some other players to watch. And, and you mentioned to me in our meeting uh, before Media Day, uh, Abby Davies is, is one to keep an eye on this year, isn't she? Yeah, so Abby Davies, she's going to be a senior this yeah. year. Um, you know, went through COVID last year, in and out. And then really before that, she had already established herself in the league. And so standing across from her then, you knew that kid was a player. Yeah. And so we're really, really excited for Abby to come in this season, have impact. She, right now she's flying in practice and she's setting the pace and um, pushing her teammates to be better as we go. Um, so I expect her to be impactful throughout the whole season, starting from her first game. Yeah, 12 goals and 16 assists over her Tiger career thus far. The Coach Brown needing her to produce for the Tigers this year. Well, let's take a look at the road ahead for the women's hockey team. We know that they open up with a non-conference game at Mercyhurst on Sunday, followed by a home-and-home -home series with Colgate, then matchups with Union, UConn, Cornell, St. Lawrence, and St. Thomas, who was new to Division I this year. You're going to get used to being here. A lot of home cooking on this schedule. Nine of the first 12 on home ice. Coach, talk about that and, and wanting to get things started on the right foot here in the GPC. Yeah, I mean, to be home is unbelievable. You always have this kind of home court advantage, but we're really excited too. I'm kind of coining it, we're back, yeah. right? <laughs> Hockey's back in the GPC. Hockey's back to RIT. So um, hopefully we can get a great turnout of fans, students, people from the community, because that's what it's about. It's playing in front of that crowd, and that crowd, or the crowd here is our, our sixth woman out there, seventh yeah. woman technically. But um, to be home, and if you look at our, our lineup of opponents, we're playing people from all all different leagues, um, which is also really big and establishing a benchmark moving forward. But we're also, um, of course, starting with Mercyhurst, and then we head right into a top 10 team with Colgate. And so it's always, in my brain, you got to play the best to be the best. Sure. So we're really excited to bring that competition here, um, put it in front of our fans, and just continually grow throughout the season. And obviously, CHA will be a tough road, as we mentioned. Penn State ranked number 10 in the preseason rankings. And, uh, and the, the defending champ from CHA, uh, unfortunately, Robert Moore is folding both their men's and women's hockey programs. We hope that they'll get back at some point. But that obviously affects your league as well, doesn't it? Yeah, so, I mean, it's a bummer when any college hockey program folds. Yeah. I mean, for, I feel for those athletes. I feel for the staff. I feel for alumni, anyone involved. Um, but, you know, right now we have to focus on us. We have to focus on our league. And, um, you know, we, we send them vibes that hopefully yeah. they come back. But really it's a matter of, um, you know, having successful programs out there from all different areas. So um, the league will be still tough to play against every opponent in the league. It's, it's anyone's game sure. when you go into it. There's... Uh, that's just a, it's a dog fight. That's the CHA. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bummer overall that we lost Robert Morris. Well, best of luck. Uh, let's tell fans how they can get here in this building. Uh, reminder, you can get your tickets to RIT Women's Hockey or Men's Hockey by visiting the uh, box office or calling 475-4121 or online at rittickets.com. Fans are eligible to purchase women's hockey season tickets for just $20 with the purchase of any men's season ticket package. RIT faculty, staff, alumni, and students will be admitted for free to all women's games with a valid ID. Coach, thanks so much for joining us here today. Best of luck this season and obviously down at Mercyhurst on Sunday. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. And we hope to see everyone at the game. So absolutely, absolutely. Go Tigers. We're looking forward to it. Thanks so much, Celeste Brown, the Bruce B. Bates women's hockey coach here at RIT. When we come back, we'll turn our attention to men's hockey as the Tigers will have four fifth-year seniors on the ice this year. We'll talk about that and much more with head coach Wayne Wilson next. This is RIT Sports Zone Live. solutions fueled by innovation changing ourselves and the world around us we reside at the intersection of the exceptional and the unconventional we are a community of curious minds that achieve make improve perfect at rit we're always on to something amazing
And back here at the Gene Policini Center on Media Day for RIT Hockey. We just heard from the women's team. Now we turn our attention to the men's program. They are just 16 days away from their season opener here in this building against Colgate. The Tigers, like most teams around the country, are coming off a strange year where they almost didn't even play. And then once they did take the ice in late November, they had to endure, endure stoppages along the way as well. RIT ending finishing up 9-9-2 nine, nine, and two, and saw their season come to the end in the Atlantic Hockey quarterfinals in March after being swept in a best of three against Canisius. Now with the end of the 2020 season being wiped out and last season's schedule being so unpredictable, the NCAA granting all student athletes an extra year of eligibility due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That's good news for RIT men's hockey as well as several players are taking advantage of that extra extra year, including forward Jake Hamaker. Hamaker will return for a fifth season. The California native has played in 128 games and has tallied 34 career goals and 51 assists in the Tiger sweater. Forward Nick Bruce also decided to return to RIT this fall. Number 19 finished fifth in scoring last season with four goals and 12 assists in 18 appearances for Coach Wilson's team. And defensively, the Tigers are getting a first team all-conference blue liner back to number five Dan Willett is returning Willett uh, tied for the team lead with 14 assists last season he leads the current roster with 61 career assists and ranks second with 70 career points and then in net a big return as well Tigers getting number one Ian Andriano back for a fifth season Andriano made six starts last year, going three and three with a 2.92 goals against average. Andriano has the most experience of the four goalies on the roster right now, having made 24 career starts. Joined now by the head coach of the RIT Tigers. You know him well. He's only been here 23 <laughs> years. 23 years. How did we get here? Yeah, it's been a while, yeah. but it's been a great trip. And uh, uh, really looking forward to another season. After 23, you, yeah. you know, it's, you just want to keep, keep going and uh, – Really looking forward to, you know, those four guys that you just mentioned that are returning. Uh, I think that's great for them, and they'll all be getting their master's degree which uh, and still be able to play college hockey. That's uh, a great feat for them, and and uh, we're going to be counting on them uh, and their leadership uh, uh, to have a very successful season. How much does that add? I mean, it's an unexpected little present, I guess you could say, yeah. to have that kind of talent and experience coming back. Well, we, we offered it to all our seniors last year because we knew last year was not going to be your typical college experience and didn't know how they want to actually end their careers. Right. And uh, four of them decided to come back. The other ones, for a lot of different reasons, though, uh, some of it was uh, they didn't have the master's program that they wanted and they didn't want to, I guess, continue to keep paying to sure. go to school just to play hockey. Others uh, had some other opportunities for them waiting as well, so they, they took them on that. So well, we're very lucky to have those four along with our traditional senior class, and uh, oh, we have the makings of what I think is going to be a very good team, uh, not only within our league but also nationally. Uh, but it's a little unknown what all the other teams are going to have because sure. they've got guys coming back. The transfer portal, people were able to add some people through that. So a lot of unknowns as we enter this year. The fact that we didn't play the other side of our conference yeah. – a lot of unknowns there, so uh, it's going to make for an interesting year, and, and we're really looking forward to it. You, you look at the guys coming back, how, how does that affect the younger guys? And, and, and certainly their playing time. Well, yeah, and so I think, uh, but we, we planned it. It's, it's really making for a large senior class, but you know, we talked to our, our seniors last year about who wants to come back, because we wanted to recruit accordingly. You know, We didn't want to have the surprise of of uh, or maybe thinking that five guys were coming back and they didn't and all of a sudden we're five guys short or have five guys deciding to return and then recruiting like everyone's not and then having five more bodies so we do have a little bit extra large uh, roster one extra in each position uh, but uh, we were prepared for those uh, they, they kind of gave us a commitment before we even started the yep. season and they want to come back they talked it over with their parents and so on and uh, uh, so we planned accordingly and we're looking forward to it. You look at the goalie situation, as I mentioned, uh, Ian's coming back. You'll have four on the roster. Is it Ian's job to lose? Is there a competition? How would you assess well, the Well, there's, there's a competition. I think Ian, uh, just with having games played, uh, uh, makes him the experienced goalie. I think the one thing that Ian probably brings as much as anything else is maybe doesn't bring a lot of game experience, although he has more than the others, is just his work habits and yeah. practice and, and the type of person he is. It just makes us a better team. So... 
um, you know, statistically, you may be looking at stats and saying, oh, I, you know, I don't know, you know, like, where does that all fit in? But it's his competitiveness, his uh, just being a great teammate and all that that's going to really help our team as we move forward. And speaking of helping your team, you get a newcomer, a transfer from UMass, the team that won the national championship last year. Is is he maybe one of the most impactful newcomers to this squad, do you think? Well, I think uh, we call him be? JoJo. Gian Franco is his <laughs> official name. Uh, well, I think he does a lot of different things. One, uh, someone that we had watched uh, quite a bit yeah. well before he even went to UMass. So we knew a lot about him. Played with a couple of our players, which was also helpful to – to guess, get a little more insight about him as a person, as, as we never really knew him as a, as a person, but more as a player. Uh, but when we had three freshmen and a transfer last year, so four new people in our lineup, it's going to give us instant uh, experience there. And as those other freshmen all have taken another step, we wanted to break up our classes, and it was important that we could bring in someone that we also think that can come in and, and, and help us immediately, which... Uh, from what we've seen so far, he's going to be a big help to us. I think it's going to add a lot with Willett. Yeah. You know, so you've got two pretty good uh, experienced upperclassmen now, along with some other guys, but uh, uh, Spence Berry uh, really came into his own last year. But the freshmen now can kind of grow on a little bit more natural rate versus our expe expectations exceeding really their one year of experience. And not even really, it's half a year when you talk about 20 games. Yeah. The, the, the freshman only played half a year, but it, it was a valuable uh, season last year for playing 20 games and our daily practices for those freshmen. They're much better players for it now than they would have been if we didn't play a season or whatever the other circumstances could have came up. So we're, we're, we're in good shape back there. That's where I think you're going to see the biggest improvement. I think up front, uh, I think we're going to be able to score goals. I think we were one of the elite teams that way last year. It's defensively now where, where are we going to be? And I think... Uh, with JoJo and yeah. and Dan coming back, along with the natural growth of just being a little bit older, it's going to help us a lot. You talked about being able to score goals. One of the guys that did that for you, the co-player of the year in the conference, Will Calverly, really came on last year. What do you think the difference was for him? Well, you know, I thought he had a great freshman year, and yeah. he's, he's been growing into this. Uh, his track record throughout his career is uh, winning championships and being captains of teams and and this year uh, has been no different, or last year for that matter, too. So uh, he'll have a bit of a target on his back this yeah. year, and uh, deservingly so. He's, he's a great player, and uh, uh, I think what makes his game uh, uh, so good and, and, and really difficult for other teams to key on is, is that uh, he's not a flash-and-dash guy. He's, he's not just uh, looking for offensive opportunities. He's such a great 200-foot player. We use him in our penalty-killing face-offs. Uh, every aspect of our game, he... He uh, brings a great play. So we appreciate him for more than just his scoring exploits, and maybe that's what gets him the awards and everything. Sure. But I think there's way more to his game than just that. And, and I think that was demonstrated. Not many co-players of the year win the scoring and also become defensive player of the year. The last one was Matt Garbowski and uh, very similar type good. players. And, <laughs> and uh, both got the same type of accolades. Absolutely. Well, we'll, we'll welcome in the, uh, the captain of the Tigers, Will Calverly, joining us down from the green room downstairs. Uh, it, what does it mean to you to be captain of this program? It's a huge honor. Obviously, since my four years have been here, I've seen a ton of great captains. I've been able to learn from all of them. So I think just being a tiger, being a captain of the Tigers, is just an unbelievable honor. Led the team in scoring last season. Uh, coach talked about what clicked, but what clicked for you? What do you think it was? Um, I think I was just playing with more confidence and uh, just having fun out there. Like uh, last year was a roller coaster of a year with all these cancellations. So I think I was just trying to make the most of every game, and I think that just led to success on the ice. Fifth-year guys, uh, we talked about them coming back. What does that mean to you, not only on the ice, to have them there, but in the locker room as well, that presence? Um, it takes a little bit of pressure off the seniors because um, obviously they're bringing back uh, as fifth-years are coming with more experience than we ever had. So they'll be able to take a little bit of that load, and uh, we'll just be able to uh, rely on them for a little bit of the leader presence as well. And finally, uh, you recorded two hat tricks in this building last year. No hats on the ice. No fans cheering. Obviously very strange. What will it be like for you? Have you given any thought for you and your teammates when you take that ice here in 16 days, what it's going to be like to have them back? Oh, it's going to be exciting. Um, well, there's only the super seniors, seniors and juniors really only know what it's like to have the fans here. And uh, I think these sophomores and freshmen are going to be in for a shock when they see the passion that the RIT fans bring. 
Well, Will, best of luck to you this year. Your first game at Colgate on October 2nd in this building. We look forward to a, another great season of Tiger hockey. Best of luck to you. Thanks, Kevin. All right, Coach. Well, you've got a good one there in, in your captain. And, and obviously, uh, you've got to be ready. You like who you have. You got a tough schedule as always uh, ahead of you here, don't you? Yeah, we do. Uh, we got a great schedule. We're going to Notre Dame for a couple games. We're hosting St. Lawrence uh, at the Blue Cross game. We also have uh, uh, Colgate to kick off. Uh, we went there last year, so it's nice to have them back in our building when we have fans here. Uh, Arizona State again back in our building. We played a Big Ten schedule last year, so non-conference wise, uh, exciting games. We're going to Princeton, and then uh, in conferences, it's not getting any easier. No. Uh, so tough, tough league play, and looking forward to the challenges. Yeah, you look at that first month of the schedule here. The trip to Notre Dame, as Coach mentioned, um, obviously Brick City against St. Lawrence, an opener against Colgate. Some good tests early for the Tigers. You can get the entire men's hockey schedule and women's hockey schedule at ritathletics.com. All the information on the Tigers can be found there or on the app as well. Um, the RIT Tiger app available uh, for Apple and Android, also Roku and uh, Amazon TV as well. A great asset to have if you are a Tiger fan of any of our Division One or Division Three sports here at RIT. Well, that's going to do it for RIT Hockey Media Day. My thanks to Jackie Nicholson, Celeste Brown, and of course, Wayne Wilson. Best of luck to you all this season, and thank you so much for watching. We look forward to another exciting season here at RIT as college hockey is officially back.